I pinned I pinned there my you. Phone. All right. Are we ready to start? Yes. Perfect. Oh. So I just want to say hello. It's great to see so many people joining in today for our conversation about um, seniors and, and taxes. It's, it's a good chance for us to talk a bit about some of the policy issues that you're going to be hearing about um, and also how you can access services to help you to file taxes. Um, maybe a little bit about why it's important to do that because I do get some questions sometimes from people about, well, I'm not earning a salary anymore, so why should I be filing taxes, those types of things. So thank you all for joining and there is going to be an opportunity for you to ask questions after we've heard from the people who've joined me. Um, and I want to just give a really special thank you because today I'm joined by Amanda from Woodgreen and I'm also joined by Elizabeth, Isabel and Jean from uh, Fairness for Single Seniors or Single Seniors for Tax Fairness. And so just a chance to hear a little bit from them about um, some of their ideas and what the opportunities are. I also just want to take a chance while I have people who've just signed on and you're fresh this year um, throughout this year dental benefits are going to be available to seniors over the age of 65 it's also going to be uh, for people under the age of 18 it's for people with family incomes under $90,000. And that also um, do not have any insurance of their own to cover dental services. I say that because do watch, you will be getting um, notices each couple, each month, the age drops for signing up. Uh, and so you will be getting notices in the mail if you're eligible. And if you're not sure, you think you might be eligible, but you haven't received a notice, you can reach out to my office so that we can help you with that because that's a really nice big a big advance and I'm, I'm happy to see so many people are being able to take advantage of it. So why don't we go to the issue for today because I don't want to take up too much time talking about these other issues. Um, I will pass it now to a, a group of women who met with me. Uh, met, we've met a couple times actually and, and they raised a really interesting um, issue that I hadn't really turned my mind to uh, until I met with them, uh, but I think that they have some very great and important ideas about how can we make sure that people who are single seniors um, get all of the same equity within the tax system uh, as you might as you might have if you are part of a, a larger family uh, in your household. They're going to explain it uh, in quite a bit of detail. So why don't I pass it over to you? I think, Elizabeth, that you are going to be the one who's going to be leading this presentation. Yes, that's that's true, Julie. Okay. Um, thank so, you so much. Thank you. And uh, Mariah, will wait for our video. Your video should work now. Okay. Okay, 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 guys. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Elizabeth Brown. I'm with a group called Single Seniors for Tax Fairness. Uh, and as Julie mentioned, our group has met with her a couple of times over the years. I'm joined today by a couple of other members uh, of our group that um, I'll introduce briefly. First off is uh, Isabel Taylor. So Isabel, you want to say hello? Yes, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And then Jean uh, D'Amelio Swire. Jean, do you want to say hello? Yeah, thank you for having us. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a presentation because, of course, what is a Zoom without a presentation? And hopefully, um, hopefully you can see my slides. Can you? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So as I said, we're uh, we're our group is called Single Seniors for Tax Fairness, and and our the name of our group should probably say it all. Um, we are a Canadian nationwide movement uh, that is lobbying for revisions to the Income Tax Act to provide fairness and equity for singles. And who we define as single seniors are people who are 65 and up, uh, who've never been married or have been widowed, divorced, uh, or separated. Uh, we are entirely volunteer run. Um, we have over 850 supporters and subscribers. We did invite some of our 
uh, supporters to join us today. So hopefully you're, you're able to do so. Uh, we have met with now, I think over 130 federal MPs, of course, across all different parties. We've had up to eight petitions read in the House of Commons, again, by various MPs. And we've made recommendations uh, to the Federal Finance Committee for changes to income tax, uh, income tax legislation to improve fairness and equity. Um, and what are our concerns. And I guess I just, just before we, we proceed here, I just want to say that our group, what we're lobbying for is changes to federal legislation. Uh, we are not um, financial advisors. We're not tax specialists. We don't do tax returns other than our own. Uh, so if, as we're listening to this, if you hear anything of interest that you might want to maybe talk with one of your own financial advisors about, just make note of it and, and chat with that person. But uh, um, so what I'd like to also talk to you folks today is, you know, if you are a single senior, some of the things that we're talking about, you may be already familiar with. Um, and uh, if you are not a single senior, there may be some things that you will encounter should you ever become uh, ever become single. So it's just, I think, to, to raise awareness. Two of the areas of concern for us when it comes to income tax, uh, pension income splitting. Some of you, I'm sure, are already familiar with that. In that case, if you have a senior couple, the higher earning member of that couple, the spouse, can allocate up to 50% of certain pension earnings to a lower income spouse. And what that does is it lowers the overall tax burden for that um, couple. And it can also drop them below the threshold for the clawbacks of old age security and another credit called the non-refundable age amount tax credit. So it can really, it really is a huge benefit for couples to be able to do that. Um, another area is non-refundable tax credits. So with a couple, each member of that couple can claim three credits, a person amount, pension amount, and a non-refundable age amount. And not only can they each claim the credit, so that's six for a couple, but if one couple doesn't use up all of their credits, they can pass the unused ones to their remaining spouse. So again, between these two things, there is a significant um, tax benefit. And we'll give you, show you an example of what that can look like and the, and the differential uh, in terms of the taxes paid by um, single people versus couples. Uh, another area of concern, not specifically related to the taxes you do every day, but with Registered retirement savings plans or your RIF assets, if a member of a couple dies, then those assets can be transferred to the remaining spouse tax-free. Um, but if a single person dies, well, those uh, uh, funds are, are cashed out at time of death, and that reduces the amounts that are paid out to, to a um, non-spousal beneficiary because of the high taxation. Uh, on those assets when they're cashed out. It could be as high as maybe 50% uh, in the year of death for a single senior. So of course, if you're a, a single person and you wanna leave assets behind for your loved ones, then you're already gonna be facing um, a huge tax hit. So these are the three areas that we want to um, address with uh, in, in terms of, of making some changes. And as I mentioned earlier, we have, um, made a submission for consideration in the federal budget, the 2024 budget, which is probably coming out, I believe next month, eh, Julie? Um, so for recommendations uh, for improvement, and we basically have five recommendations. We'll share our recommendations, and then we'll show you kind of where we came up with those. Um, basically, in terms of recommendations, we would like the government to introduce a form of a tax provision to compensate single seniors for the considerable reduction in taxes that couples receive uh, from, from this. So again, because single seniors can't split their income, they don't get the same benefits. Uh, that the government implement a new uh, single senior non-refundable credit equal to half of the personal amount for a particular tax year. Um, and that the government increase the pension income amount uh, from 2000 to 3000 for single seniors. Uh, again, to try to bring back some equity um, into the tax system for singles. And also we talked about, it's not just the taxation, but as you'll see from the example we show you, uh, to increase the clawback levels for old age security and for the non-refundable age amount tax credit. Because what we will show you is, is that a couple, a single person rather, will start to have to repay some of those, uh, like their OAS, 
at a, an income level where couples don't have to do that. So we'll, we'll again show you what that means. And also, as I mentioned, um, single folks, if they want to leave their RSP RIF assets to a loved one, well, they, the taxation could be quite high. And what we're recommending is that the government amend the tax treatment of the registered retirement plan uh, proceeds on the death of a single senior to allow a tax deferred uh, rollover to any beneficiary, regardless of the relationship with the deceased. In other words, we're saying to allow a single senior to allocate, um, a designate a beneficiary of choice for those RSP and RIF assets with the idea that those assets, rather than being taxed as high as 50% in the first year, but that maybe the, the proceeds are spread out over 10 years, and then we have the corresponding uh, taxation. We recognize that RSPs are in fact a tax deferral mechanism, so we know that taxes have to be paid, but you know, is there a way to kind of spread out the payments and then consequently spread out the taxation? And if the person you designate, whether maybe it's a child or maybe it's a sibling or other person that is important to you, um, if they die within the 10 years, then of course would be the monies will be cashed out and taxed um, at that time. Um, so we'll give you a bit of background as to how we came up with some of the recommendations. And so one of the things that we asked ourselves is we know that there's real challenges with the taxation of single seniors, but have we done a really good job at showing that there's a problem? So we said, okay, let's come up with scenarios to show the disparities in the taxation between singles and, and couples. And so what we did is we wanted to, to let's look at different income levels. So uh, 50,000, 70,000, 100,000 of household income and compare the taxation of a single, say, who has $50,000 in income with that of a couple who has $50,000 in income to really kind of show what the, what the dispar disparities are. So that's what I'm gonna show you right now. And these scenarios, they highlight disparities arising from pension income splitting, uh, the clawbacks of the age amount and the repayment of the old age security, the fact that uh, couples can double uh, their tax credits while, of course, single people can't, there's only one, and then the fact that, that couples can transfer unused credits from one spouse uh, to another, unused credits. So let's take an example at $50,000, which that's roughly the median of what a lot of uh, single seniors are earning. So as I said earlier, what we wanted to do is to say, let's look at the taxation of a couple with a total of 50,000 in income with that of a single person that has 50,000 in income. And so in our scenario, uh, and all these, by the way, all these slides will give you, will tell you where our websites are. You can go and actually read our budget submission in more detail. And these scenarios are described uh, in detail in the, in the submission. So we are assuming that everyone in our scenario is receiving old age security. We're assuming everyone is receiving Canada pension. Um, we're assuming that everyone is, has another form uh, of income coming in from a pension potentially. So a couple has an ad additional 16,000 and a single person has 33. Um, now that single person may have more income from this particular source, but they do not receive the additional old age security and CPP that a couple would get. So when we compare this, so the couple is able to split their income, which of course a single person can't. The couple is also each able to claim the three credits that I mentioned, the person amount, pension amount, non-refundable age amount. And they, they can transfer unused assets, uh, credits between them. So they get right off the bat 48,000 in credits on that 50. But a single person, wait a second, a single person, they're half a couple. Why are they only able to claim 22,000 in credits when this one member of a couple can claim 24? That's because at 50, a single person is already starting to see a clawback of one of those credits, which is the non-refundable age amount. Whereas the couple on that 50 is not seeing that. And so by time, you know, the, the pension income splitting the credits work its way through the final taxation. So a single person 
will be paying roughly 6,500 in tax on 50, with a couple potentially spending 11 to 1,200 in tax on the same 50. That's a five and a half time tax differential. And our group in the advocacy work that we're doing, we don't want to the government to touch any of this that couples receive. So whether it's the pension income splitting, et cetera, um, keep all of it as we showed in our recommendations, we have some suggestions for making these more fair to single people, but that's really what we're after. We would like to see this number far more closely aligned with this number. And you know what we often hear is we hear a lot from folks who have lost their spouse. Uh, and they are in the one of the worst periods in their lives, and they are shocked to find that their taxes have significantly increased. They may find that their old age security starts getting clawed back, uh, and yet they want to be able to stay in the home and in the environment uh, that they have, have enjoyed for years, but they find that they face a significant tax hit and from the folks we've spoken to, they find that their overall household expenses don't really change that much. So this is, I think, from the, our supporters, this is a rather significant issue for them. And just to show you, these are different income levels. Uh, as we ran similar scenarios, so at thirty to forty thousand, a couple will pay no tax, but at thirty thousand, a single person could pay roughly seventeen hundred dollars in tax. At forty thousand, they're paying roughly four thousand dollars in tax, and at that level, the single person is already starting to see a little bit of a clawback on the credit. Fifty thousand, we've talked about. Seventy thousand, again, you can see the significant difference in taxation. This is uh, over twice the amount of taxation that a single person pays relative to a couple. They all the, the single person is also facing a significant clawback of one of the credits. And then at 100,000, you can see that a couple is paying roughly 13,000 in tax, a single is roughly 24, so that's almost double. Um, and by the time you hit the 100,000, the single person has had their age amount completely clawed back. Um, a couple is starting to see the clawback. And at the 100,000, a single person is starting to see a clawback of their old age security. But even at 100,000, a couple, may not experience any clawback of their old age. And you may be wondering what this blue box is. Well, this actually comes from our, a chat with, that we had with Julie. And Julie, you said to us, can you give us an example of how much more a couple would have to earn before they're paying the same tax as a single person? So this is the, an example here. So it's 70,000. A couple is paying roughly 5,500. A single could be paying 13,000. A couple could earn an additional, an additional 30,000 on top of that 70 before they're paying the same tax. So at 70,000, a single person's paying 13 and a couple can get up to 100,000 before they're paying the same tax. So this again, I think highlights just a lot of the disparities um, that we, that I think if you are single, you are, or if, you, or if you're widowed, I'm sure you're already very familiar with this. And, you know, when we talk about, well, Elizabeth, but doesn't the, the money that a couple earns, it has to pay for two people. I think we need to start asking, yes, but what does that mean? If you look at a lot of the um, discretion, not sorry, non-discretionary expenses, so this is what we're gonna focus on, the non-discretionary expenditures that uh, we pay, um, it doesn't matter whether you're married or single. Um, so in terms of our mortgage, uh, rent has nothing to do with marital status. Property taxes, well, certainly any of us in Toronto, we know what our property taxes is gonna be, what, nine and a half percent? There was discussion at one point of 16 and a half percent. You have to pay that whether you're married or single and your property taxes are based on market value assessment and mill rates and, and, and some additional uh, funds that the city wants to raise. Same with appliances, repairs, et cetera. Um, I got my snow tires on before Christmas. They didn't ask me my marital status because I guess it didn't matter. So we're really struggling with this notion as, you know, what do we mean by, well, it costs more uh, to live as a, as a couple when a lot of these expenses 
um, are, are, are hugely expensive year after year. And like I say, we, to, we talk to people who lose spouses and they don't find there's any significant drop um, in, our, in the expenses. Another survey, for example, found that 96% um, of Canadians will do anything to avoid going into long-term care. There's a lot of discussion in the senior community about aging at home. Um, and so that also will put additional uh, demands on what it is that people need to spend money on. Uh, we have um, an aging population. We've got people who want to age at home. We have people who are living longer. What that means is, is people's expenses are going to become far more individualized. We're not in a world anymore, I don't think, where you can say, well, if you're married, you spend money on this, but if you're single, you spend money on that. We don't know, and we won't know going forward. Um, and you know, we may find, for example, that a couple can help each other out with, with basic care needs, but a single person has to hire a PSW, for example. So again, I think it's not couples spend more on X and less on Y. It's, it's you know, people just will be spending uh, different amounts on different things. So I think this brings in the tax disparity even more. Um, and so this is, again, just a bit more discussion of our RSPs and RIF issues that I've already described, that when uh, one spouse dies, um, they can transfer the value of their assets uh, RIF and RSP assets to the surviving spouse tax deferred. Um, but of course, a single person can't do that. Even, you know, we have an example of, of sisters who have lived together for years. They're in Nova Scotia, lived together for years, looked after each other. But because they're siblings and not spouses, they cannot transfer their RSP and RIF assets, even though certainly the remaining sibling would be very, very deserving uh, of those assets. And um, so, as, as we've said, perhaps there's opportunity to transfer those assets with um, some kind of longer payout plan. And there is one little glimmer of hope. Um, as I said, we've done budget submissions in the past. One of our one of the recommendations was put into the uh, finance committee report that came out last year, so March 2023. Again, we've got this on our website, so it is there, and it is recommendation 115. And I'll pause for a minute and. You folks can just read that yourselves, but it's it's a step in the right direction anyway. So it has made it into a report, but it, until it hits the budget, you're not going to notice any difference. But I think it's just it's it's a, it's sort of nice to see that that has at least made it into. Uh, into the report and it now would go to the Minister of Finance and the Department of Finance for consideration in the budget. And so we won't do the questions now, of course, as Mariah said, we'll, uh, Amanda will do her, um, will do her uh, presentation, but, um, yeah. but there's certainly, uh, you know, if you want to get involved with us, you can send us an email and let, and, and indicate how you want to be involved. You can check out, uh, check out our website. If you have any groups that you'd like us to speak to, um, certainly by all means, uh, you can let us know and, and we'd certainly love to hear from you. But uh, it, you can, like I say, check out our website and, and send us an email um, at singleseniorstax at gmail.com. And uh, Isabel and, and Jean, do you want to follow up with, with anything or make any other comments? Um, it's Jean. The only comment I'd like to make is if anybody has any stories or any situations that they'd like to share with us, um, we'd like to hear your particular situations and uh, um, and we'll, in some cases, ask your permission if we can uh, post it on our website, just, uh, just to highlight some of the concerns. Obviously, we wouldn't identify the people, um, but we'd like to hear your, your situations if you have any that are applicable. Right. No, that's enough for now for me. Uh, we'll wait for the questions. <laughs> All right, great. Well, thank you. You know what? Like, I think it's amazing that we have a situation where we have so many people who are joining and who are excited about talking about taxes. You don't tend to think of it as a kind, of, but but that is a really important point that that you raised, Elizabeth. And um, so I'm happy that we could share that and I hope people do check it out. And it's something that certainly I've raised directly with the Minister for Seniors. And, and I, I, I actually think it's something we need to think about a little bit more on that, on that tax fairness piece. And this is the right time to be talking about taxes because, well, we're in tax season. So that brings me to our next presenter today, who is Amanda from Woodgreen. 
Wood Green uh, provides amazing services in our community um, for, for a lot of aspects, actually, for seniors and support for seniors. Um, today, I believe Amanda is mainly going to be talking about what they're doing to support seniors with taxes and some tips for you guys. So why don't I pass it over to you? Thank you so much for joining today. Thank you so much, Julie. I'm just going to give me a second here to share my screen. This works well. Okay, you can see the presentation. Yeah? Okay. All right, so um, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to share a little bit about our services here at World Green. Uh, I'm gonna focus specifically on the financial and development program. Um, I am a social worker and specialist on the financial empowerment team. Um, you may hey, Amanda, I'm sorry, I'm gonna break in, but I think there might be something with your microphone because you're breaking up a little bit for Ooh. me. I don't know for others, but you come in very clearly and then disappear, so. You know what? I'm just using my computer audio. Give me one second. I'll grab a, a headset and see if that makes sense. Perfect. Thank you. Um, that just helps. That just helps us to get a bit of better sense. I don't know about for everyone else, but but this is all really important information for me to try and follow. It's easier. Nice. Got the headphones out. Can you hear me now? Actually, perfectly. So okay. yes. Great. Okay. So headset it is. Um, okay. So my, I'm Amanda. <laughs> I work in the financial empowerment program at Wood Green. So I'm going to just take you through um, first a little bit about what financial empowerment is, how we define it, and then what exactly we're offering uh, the community. So um, financial empowerment as a plain definition is the feeling of being in control of your own financial situation. It's not so much about how much money you make or how much income you have, but more about growing the capacity to manage your money and make important financial decisions that you feel informed about. Um, it is a combination of your knowledge, so understanding your personal and broader financial matters, skills, the ability to apply that knowledge to your everyday life, confidence. Again, this is a huge one. A lot of people have a sense and awareness, but the confidence to feel like I know that you know, investing in this account or um, applying for my pension at this point in time is the Thing that makes the most sense for me. This is a big piece of where we step in a little bit. Um, and then informed financial decision making. So using the knowledge, the skills, and the confidence to make choices that are appropriate to your personal situation, not necessarily what the financial advisor at the bank recommends, but um, something that is relevant to your specific life circumstances. Um, so it's an essential skill. We see this every day, um, particularly as the cost of goods rises and rises, it becomes harder to um, manage our money. But having um, financial literacy skills, feeling financially empowered allows us to understand how these systems work, how they're impacting our lives, and then make determinations about what types of financial products or services are most useful for our situation. It's also about knowing where to go for help. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our program and, and not everyone will be eligible, but for those um, who are, I think we can make a, a difference. Um, so some context as well, Wood Green Community Services, as Julie mentioned, is like a large multi-service agency, mainly situated in um, uh, East York. And uh, they offer everything from childcare all the way to personal support workers for older adults. We have social work services, mental health counseling, walk-in counseling, settlement counseling, employment support for folks looking for jobs, um, youth services, and financial empowerment. So if I had to describe financial empowerment in one sentence, we offer free information, counseling, and guidance to people living on a low income who need support to address financial challenges or goals. How we do this is through a couple of core services. So our largest um, service is our tax clinic. Um, we operate a free uh, the 
We're actually the largest uh, year-round free tax clinic in the city of Toronto. And um, we support individuals and families who are living on a low income and have simple tax situations to stay up to date on their annual uh, income tax filing. So filing taxes is a big responsibility. It's also a requirement at these days for most programming. Um, even the new you know, Canadian dental care plan, you're going to need to file your taxes in order for your eligibility to be assessed for that. And this process can be intimidating for a lot of people. It can be costly if they're not sure what other alternatives they have um, or not sure how to do it on their own. And we do see that many people fall behind. Um, which is okay. The Canada Revenue Agency is uh, is pretty flexible in the sense that if you file your taxes late and you don't owe any money, it's okay. You might have impacts to your benefits, but you'll still get most of your um, what you're entitled to. And so we can help folks file up to 10 years of back taxes. Um, in March, April, and usually May, we only do um, the last year or the most recent year. So right now we're only filing 2023 taxes because there's such a demand in the community. We want to make as many appointments available for current year filing as possible. We do operate this service in partnership with the Canada Revenue Agency's Community Volunteer Income Tax Program, also known as CVITP. And um, we cannot get this work done without the support of our volunteers. Uh, we have over 175 volunteers that help us to file uh, taxes and book our appointments and um, host clients when they're in our spaces. Um, so it's quite quite a mission to get this off the ground. I was at some training events today with our volunteers getting ready to, uh, to start filing on Saturday. Um, I'll just go over the eligibility criteria here. So uh, we can support people. So if you're a single person, um, we can support you if with our, with tax filing. If your income is under forty thousand dollars, if it's a couple or one person with a dependent, it's fifty thousand um, dollars. For three people, it goes up by two thousand five hundred dollars for each additional dependent. So that's really kind of qualifying for children under the age of eighteen. If you are an adult who has a, an adult dependent living with you, you don't count as like two people in this situation. You would each be two single people. There are some situations that are beyond our capacity because we don't have the training. And the Canada Revenue Agency says that they're too complex for uh, free tax clinics. So um, it includes self-employment income, but we actually have a new option I'll talk about in a second for that. Um, so if you have rental income, so if you own a property and are renting it out to others or renting out a room, um, for example, and claiming that as rental income, that would be too complex for our situation. If you have capital gains or losses for folks who filed bankruptcy or for deceased persons. We operate this service um, over the phone three days of the week. We have afternoon and evening appointments, and we also operate in person at multiple locations across the city. The main location is on the Danforth, right at Danforth and Jones, so accessible by PAPE or Donlands um, subway stations. Um, and, uh, and then we have a location in Scarborough and also a location in Etobicoke, which is new this year. We have a new project called Tax Skills for Self-Employed Workers, which can help equip um, anyone who is uh, self-employed and earning less than $50,000 a year with uh, financial literacy workshops about how to handle bookkeeping and record keeping, how to um, prepare to file your tax returns, your GST, HST returns, and how to deal with the Canada Revenue Agency. Um, and then we also offer free tax coaching where we'll actually teach folks how to um, learn to do their own taxes. And for this, we use uh, TurboTax, which is a software by Intuit, who helps to uh, power this program. This is a brand new program and is really helping us to meet the need of a lot of um, clients, both um, newcomers to Canada, and we're also seeing a lot of older adults turn to the gig economy. So whether they're doing kind of like landscaping on the side, uh, selling um, uh, baked goods and, and kind of other food, 
Uber delivery, um, all those kinds of things. Um, we are supporting those industries with doing their taxes because they're more complicated. We also offer one-on-one uh, -on -one financial counseling with registered social workers. And our team of social workers on in this program specialize in navigating uh, government systems, income support programs, and uh, how to improve credit, manage uh, debt options, tax problem solving. And we do something called a benefit screening where we learn about the person we're working with, understand their demographics, what costs they have, and figure out if there are any um, government or social programs that they're not already accessing that can help to reduce those costs or increase their income. We can help with the applications for those. We can help folks to um, uh, advocate if they've been denied um, and they're they're actually entitled. There's always mistakes that happen. Um, and so we just want to make sure that no one's falling through uh, any cracks. We are here to help navigate. We also support some more proactive. She'll just switch to the next slide here. Um, these are the kind of buckets that we uh, we support with. And um, uh, we also do some more proactive work when it comes to maybe you want to start budgeting or need a refresh budget. Maybe it's about savings plans. There's the registered disability savings plan. Let's say you're a caregiver and you have a dependent um, with a long-term uh, permanent disability. There are options out there and there's not a lot of awareness. We also help um, folks to establish registered education savings plans. Maybe you have a child or a grandchild you're interested in getting that set up for or contributing to, um, or your own savings plans for retirement, for just, just general savings goals. You can use a tax-free savings account. We can help you navigate through all of those, what makes most sense, and be strategic about it. Uh, for our financial counseling service, we do not have a catchment area, nor do we have any demographic limitations. You simply need to identify as a person living in the city of Toronto who is living on a low income and facing barriers to overcoming financial challenges or achieving financial goals. Um, I will share our contact information at the end, and I can also share some flyers to be distributed to the uh, participants here tonight. Um, our tax clinic, you can book the appointments online uh, through the Wood Green website, or you can give us a call. So we've got both options. And then for financial counseling, um, you can give us a, a call directly, and we'll do a brief intake and arrange your appointment. I'm just going to kind of take you through um, a few different scenarios. A lot of people find it really difficult to identify whether or not this service can help them. Um, so I'm going to take you through some scenarios that kind of highlight different um, topic areas that we touch on. So it can be a challenge to pay rent, um, your bills, taxes, and other expenses, particularly if your income has been unsteady or below your needs. So a financial empowerment social worker can really step in here to explore options about ways to stabilize and improve your financial situation. So this can be a really good fit for someone who is having challenges paying their bills and expenses or keeping on top of those. And um, maybe they're looking also to explore ways to increase income. Uh, government and social programs offer various benefits like the GST HST credit, the welcome policy in Toronto for recreational services. Um, the Ontario Energy Board offers a hydro bill credit. Um, and then there's free or low cost medications and now dental coverage. Um, so if you're living on a low income, you might be eligible for additional one time or ongoing benefits that you're not already aware of. This is where those benefit screenings can come in to help us maximize um, what's available in the community and your personal finances. Obviously, this is a uh, focused on tax webinar. So a tax return, particularly for folks living on a lower income, really acts as a gatekeeper for many sources of income um, and government benefits and even social programs. So you cannot get your GST, your now newly renamed Canada Carbon Rebate, your um, Trillium benefit, or you know if you're a pensioner, you cannot get your guaranteed income supplement if you're eligible for that without filing your tax return. 
And so we often see a lot of people um, who maybe forget to file their tax return or are filing late uh, see a crisis point in their finances because their guaranteed income supplement stopped in July when the renewal period typically happens. We can help intervene in those situations. So if you or you know a member of your community who's struggling like this, please feel free to connect them with us. Um, uh, but this is why taxes is such a focal point of our program and why we invest so much time and energy and funds into running the clinics uh, year round and running them at the scale that we do. Um, you need a tax return if you live in subsidized housing to renew your uh, annual rent subsidy every year. If you want to access a food security program like a food bank, you also need a tax return. You need to show proof of income. The new dental care plan, like I said earlier, you'll need to show proof of income. So taxes are really essential these days to helping um, create access points between services. Just to illustrate a, a little example here, um, of the impact of a tax return financially. So Victor is 65 years old. He's single with no dependents. He accesses Canadian pension benefits like the Canada Pension Plan, Old Age Security, and the Guaranteed Income Supplement. And he also works part-time as a cashier. He pays market rent. And so when Victor, uh, you know, if he has an appointment with us um, to file his 2023 taxes, we're going to let him know that for the 2023 tax year, he's eligible for $455 from GST HST credit, $1,334 from the Ontario Trillium benefit, and $560 from the Canada uh, carbon rebate. So over just with one tax return, he's unlocked over $2,000 in uh, benefits. This is life-changing for someone who is uh, living on a lower income um, with the you know housing affordability, rising cost of groceries, every dollar counts. And um, all, he would go without a lot if he didn't file his taxes this year. Not to mention all the other things like guaranteed income supplement and um, access to, you know, hydro rebates, all these things that he would not be able to access without filing his tax return. Shifting gears a little bit, um, talking about credit. So Woodgreen Financial Counseling Program can help with uh, understand or you know, applying to get a credit report, understanding the information that's available on there and looking at your credit score to figure out what ways do you have to improve that? How do you repair it if you've had a bad debt history? Um, how do you make sure to protect yourself against identity theft when it comes to credit cards and other scams? We can address all of that in our counseling sessions. Uh, folks are often struggling with debt. That could be from credit cards, student loans, personal loans, um, mortgages, lines of credit, payday loans, tax debts, the list goes on. And there are lots of ways to manage debts to reduce costs and interest rates. Um, and it can be very stressful. It can have a really big toll on your mental and even your physical health. Coming to an agency like ours, or there are a few other agencies like ours across the city, to support um to get support to understand what your situation looks like and what your options are specific to your situation um, is really, really important. Um, it can also help manage stress if you're getting uh, collection calls to know what your options are, what you legally are obligated to uh, do in those situations, what, what collection agencies are legally obligated, um, what rules they have to apply by. So lots of different uh, pieces there to keep in mind. When it comes to the Canada Revenue Agency, we know that folks um, are in positions right now where they owe money, maybe to income taxes, maybe also to um, COVID pandemic benefit payments. Um, we're seeing that more and more right now, and we can help you to work with the Canada Revenue Agency to establish realistic payment arrangements or apply for taxpayer relief. These things exist. They maybe aren't very clear on some of the letters from the government, and it's understandable. They're complicated processes, um, but we can help to kind of navigate and, and create more plain language understanding of what options are available to someone facing this situation. 
uh, I mentioned earlier about budgeting. Maybe you want to create a new budget or you want to update it. Maybe you have some new savings goals that you want to work towards or um, any other kind of like stabilization plan. We can help you to build a budget, learn how to expense track, maybe use your bank's apps that are available to help you with make that process easier. Or there's other apps available or we can go pen and paper, lots of options available. And we work with uh, where you're at and what your needs are um, to figure out what makes the most sense. Uh, I don't know how many folks here might be receiving social assistance benefits at the moment, but trans uh, transitioning from social assistance to uh, employment or even to um, pension benefits can be a rocky process a lot of the time. They're, you're going from a, a provincial benefit to a federal benefit, um, or if you're going from Ontario Works to Working, there are lots of rules in these types of programs. Um, we can help you to create a transition plan that helps you feel informed and in control of what you can expect from that change, what benefits you might be losing, what you're gaining, what things you need to apply for. Um, there's lots of little details to navigate, and um, unfortunately, they're not available in one place because they're different levels of government. So we can help to bridge those gaps. Um, okay. There are lots of different types of savings accounts. And if you, you know, even do a simple Google search, there's lots of confusing and conflicting financial advice available. Even when you go into the bank, at the end of the day, the financial advisors at a bank are selling you the products that they offer, right? They're offering a specific type of service. Um, and so it's hard to kind of get non-biased information sometimes and to know what type of savings plan or plans make the most sense for you. This can be really overwhelming. Um, and so we can try and uh, make a more simple description of each type of savings tool, understand your needs and understand what makes sense for you and help you to prepare for a meeting with a financial advisor. You're still going to need a financial advisor because they're the person who's going to talk you through the different types of investment options. Um, but we can make sure that you feel informed when you go in for that meeting. Okay, and when it comes to pension benefits, again, um, we mentioned that the transition can be challenging and sometimes feel um, really impossible to pre prepare for or sometimes even impossible to save for your retirement. Um, but there are lots of benefits that are available, particularly for those living on a lower income that um, we want to encourage people to access and make use of. They all have application forms, though. Nothing is really automatic any, at this point. Um, so we can help you to navigate those, make sure you're getting all the paperwork in on time so that you're not going any months without a pension benefit or without medication coverage. Um, uh, again, that transition plan can be really uh, essential in making it a smooth process. Uh, anyone is interested, we are always looking for volunteers. So I just thought I'd throw in this little plug here. Um, we are, I think we're going to have one more volunteer training at the end of March for our tax clinic. We run year round. So if right now is not a good time, check in with Wood Green. Um, our volunteer services team uh, not only recruits volunteers for our programming for the tax clinic, but for all the different services at Wood Green. Um, and so if this might not be the fit, you don't think you want to sit at a computer and prepare taxes or, or book appointments, that's okay. No problem. Um, there might be something else that you're interested in at Wood Green, and uh, we would love to, to have you as part of our team. Again, I will share, I'll share a copy of all of these slides, but um, the individual flyers for each of these things as well. And here's our contact information. I can put that in the chat as well. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, like that was really, really helpful. I really <laughs> appreciated getting all of that information. It was a lot. Um, it was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so um, someone asked in the, in the questions and I'll just repeat it. We will be for everyone who has signed up. We will be sending an email with links so that you okay. can see these slides and you can have that information because it's been a lot to digest. Um, before we go to questions, we have a few minutes for questions. I did want to highlight one thing that came out of what um, I just heard you talking about, Amanda, which is um, there's a real concern about uh, fraud 
uh, of people who call and tell you that they're calling from the CRA. Mm -hmm. And they can sound very threatening when they call, say, you know, that you owe money, that there are going to be consequences if you don't pay. And so I, I just think I should take this moment to remind people and to just let them know um, two things. First of all, the CRA does not call you. They send you letters. So if you receive a phone call from someone that says that they are calling you from the Canada Revenue Agency and that you owe money, um, I recommend you hang up. You can, if you still have concerns about that, verify it on your own. And there are phone numbers online, or I'm sure Woodgreen would be able to help you. My office would be able to help you get the correct phone number to contact the Canada Revenue Agency mm -hmm. to see if it's correct. But if someone calls you and they're telling you that you owe money and they're asking for you to pay it right away, do not continue with that call. But I, if you have a concern, like I said, reach out to my office to get the right contact information or we'll reach out to Wood Green. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just want to be sure because it's been happening a lot. And and I've received those calls myself and, and they can seem they, they can feel really quite frightening when you first get those calls. So sorry, I just I felt like I should just jump in and, and really highlight that point. Yeah. Um, I've seen some questions coming up. So why don't I go to some of you? Um, so one of them was actually uh, for, for you, Amanda, just about what you consider to be the low income threshold for Wood Green. It's a great question. So for our tax clinic, um, because it's kind of more of a transactional service that people would use in theory once a year, um, we do have a very strict eligibility threshold when it comes to income. So for a single person, it's $40,000 or under. A couple is $50,000. And then an additional $2,500 is added on to that for each additional dependent and as part of the family. So those are dependents under age 18. The financial counseling side, we're a little bit more gray because we can appreciate and understand that even if you are at, you know, $50,000 as a single person, there may not be um, another type of service like ours that can address some of those needs. You might have a lot of debt. You might be living with a disability. You might be experiencing a life transition that's causing um, a lot of financial instability. What I will say is we do an intake with the purpose of making sure that we think we can support your your issue, even if your income is a little bit higher. And we will be honest if we think it's outside of our scope. For example, I don't know how to do an estate plan. We're not lawyers, right? So we would, we would let you know that that's outside of our concerns. However valid they are, we tried and find another reputable service to connect you to. So- I would say if you're unsure about the financial counseling, give us a call. We will ask to understand your income sources and amounts a little bit more to make sure that that fits in with um, what our service is able to provide and, and the training of our staff. Okay, no, thank you. Um, and I just realized I should be pinning you as we go, but I've been reading the questions as I go back and forth. So I apologize, Amanda. I think the people were looking at me reading while you answered that. I'll be better for the next one. Um, I think the next one, actually, I'll go to Elizabeth. It was more that people were asking, it was a question sort of for me, but I think that maybe it can touch upon interest in the issues that you raised. They were asking what, how likely is that recommendation that you made to be accepted um, and how long would it take? to 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 be uh, adopted i can speak a bit to that but maybe if you can speak about like what the feedback you've been hearing from others and and just also what people can do i can talk about that too but what they mm -hmm. can do with you to advocate for these kinds of changes so why don't i answer first that i have not seen like this has not been adopted as something that's going to happen yet so this is something that still needs you know, it needs people like um, the, I'm sorry, I get your name wrong each time, but seniors for single seniors, seniors for, for SSTF, there you go, SSTF, um, <laughs> to be advocating for it. I will tell you that, so I, I think they'll be giving you good advice and I'll pass you to Elizabeth for that yeah. part. Um, but once adopted, it would have to go into a budget and be accepted into a budget. And then it would probably not be for that tax year, but for the following tax year is usually the way it works. So you would be a year out, even if it was adopted in this budget, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be this tax year. It would probably be for the following one that it would come into effect. Just, just on the details piece. But Elizabeth, why don't I pass to you on the advocacy part? 
Yes, and this is something, you know, we've, we have met with a number of, of MPs or, on our current budget submission. I think I think they, they understand what we're talking about. I think um, they're not willing to commit, of course. So I think they want to sort of give it some further thought and some further study. And, and in terms of the MPs we've been focusing on lately are folks who sit on the finance committee. It's really has to come from the federal finance committee making those recommendations that then go to the minister of finance and department of finance for consideration. But um, so it's, it's one that we can continue to, uh, to advocate for. I think that would make a significant difference in the taxation of, of single seniors. And um, so, like I say, there, we, we do discuss it with the MPs, but like I say, I understand their position on not wanting to, uh, to commit as yet, but everyone we've spoken to has certainly been supportive uh, of, of our ideas, but there's a, if, a long process want, for getting it. In. Sorry, if people yep. want to support you, what should they do? Um, well, as I say, you can uh, go to our email address here. I'll just uh, share again. And, and again, when the slides go out, you can see it. Uh, so, um, so here's some things you can do to help. So we've we've given you um, what our uh, website is, so they can go and check out our website. What we have on there um, is we have a template where you can write to your MP. So if you like Julie and would like to write to her, I'm I'm sure Julie, you love getting letters, um, <laughs> but you can certainly write to your local MP. Um, if you have any other 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 particular groups that uh, um, you belong to that you'd like us to be able to speak to. Um, we do accept donations. We have a Facebook page. Uh, tell your family and friends. We do have subscriber uh, a list um, that you can join. So um, I think again, it's just you know, even at minimum, writing writing to your MP using our template uh, would be would be very helpful. So those are some uh, some ideas. But you, but all these things are outlined on our on our website, so you can check that out or send us an email if you want to know more. Great. Um, and what I'll do, if you can give me back your screen. <laughs> Sorry, oh, sure, of course. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, 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 we're all working together, guys. We're, we're yeah. working together. Um, I think my next question actually was for Amanda, just as we're starting to close out. But there were a lot of people who had more specific tax questions. And, and so I'll say I don't think that we're able to give any financial advice or, or tax advice here in this kind of space because some things might be a little bit different depending mm -hmm. on your circumstance, but, but what would you recommend then just, I know you've kind of covered it in a, in a broad way on your slide, but if someone has a specific tax question and, and they follow the criteria, they have the criteria to qualify for wood green, uh, what would be their next step? I would say to call our financial counseling program. That's probably a better place. Cause you'll, you'll likely be speaking to one of our social workers directly. Um, uh, you'll leave a voicemail first and we'll give you a call back um, uh, in order to answer your questions. Is it about navigating benefits, what you can claim? And we're generally pretty able to answer those questions ad hoc, um, even if you're not you know, technically eligible for our service. We don't need to book an appointment to answer most questions unless they become really specific. Um, so that's a good place to start. And we'll go from there and see uh, what makes sense. Great. And just an interesting quick point, I'm keeping you on there just for one more second, sure. is um, because Single Seniors for Tax Fairness invited some people from outside of our area and they were mm. wondering what kinds of tax clinics are out there. Like, do you know of any resources where if people were interested, because it, it is something that actually the federal government supports. Yes. Um, tax clinics and communities across the country. What's an easy way for them to find it? And my office can probably find some to send to the email to you. Yeah, I think Mariah did put in a link for the free tax clinic. So the, okay, the community volunteer tax programs are a good place to start. And many of those agencies um, also may have some similar form of financial literacy, financial counseling attached to them. Um, it is it varies a lot. It's not super established. We're really working hard to to bring this to you every um, city and whether rural or, or, or urban. Um, but uh, um, another organization you can look at is Prosper Canada. 
Um, they are a champion of our work and um, often work with federal, provincial, and municipal governments to help our services get funded and recognized. Um, and so they likely have an, a network listing of the different agencies that are kind of doing this work at different levels. Um, they all kind of look a little bit different, but that's probably a good place to start. They also have a lot of cool tools that you can self-serve and, and look at and a lot, a lot of cool stuff. I'll try and find the link and, and put it in the chat. I love it. I love that you were so excited about that. Um, just those are the cool tools. So look, um, I think we're wrapping up now, but I really wanted to thank everyone who joined us. And I wanted to just let you know that this webinar is being recorded. So it will be available on um, my YouTube so that if anyone wants to go back and kind of catch it again, wants to see more details or has a friend who wasn't able to make it, you can share that. We will be sending the slides and information uh, that we've been sharing here with people who signed up. So we will make sure that you get that information. I also want to let you know that one of the last webinars we had, just because I think Elizabeth had mentioned it, was about people wanting to age at home. One of our, our last ones that we had was on aging at home and about um, naturally occurring retirement communities and, and some of the work that's being done here in Toronto about that. So please, you can check that out. We can send you information from what happened at that webinar as well. If you have ideas for what you might want for a future webinar um, focused for seniors in particular to try and get you information, please let me know. I will remind you again, the dental benefit. This is a great moment for seniors to be able to sign up every Every month, the age goes down for sign up. It's not changing your eligibility. It's just that they're trying to manage the number of people who are signing up each month so that the system doesn't crash. We're basically taking the maximum number of people each month. But what it means is that people over the age of 65 who earn a family income of less than $90,000 and who don't have their own insurance will be eligible for dental benefits. So um, definitely watch for a letter to advise you about that. And if you need more information, you can reach out to my office. And lastly, just thank you. Thank you to everyone who took time. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Isabel and Jean. It was really, really nice to, to be able to hear from you and your expertise. And, and thank you to everyone who took some time to listen and to share some of your ideas. I, I really look forward to our next conversations. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Thank you.